My name's Dan. Cheers. We're going to be working with a couple of paid plugins, Slate Digital, the whole su uh, suite. Their plugins just make everything sound 10 times more awesome and they're super easy to use. I have Get Good Drums and the rest I have all free plugins. Uh, my main one is going to be uh, BBC Symphonic Orchestra Discover. But I'll just play the clip I have so far. I want to write on sort of orchestral synthwave track. These shorts are from a contact library, a free contact library called the Free Orchestra uh, from Project Sam. And they've got some really, really cool instruments over here. And I'm using the short strings. Which now for the basses, I'm using Anna 2, which is a synth that is part of the Slate Digital subscription. And I'm using the Fat Juno bass preset as well as the Profit bass preset. And for the drums, I'm just, I just have a basic setup going with the Lindrum kick and the Lindrum snare. Now as for mixing, let's see what we have so far. I've just got some cleanup EQ going over here. I like my kicks and snares pretty scooped. Um, and we have some EQ, some parallel compression, as well as some main compression over here. And some distortion to fatten it up. And for the mastering chain, it's a pretty basic sort of smile EQ with a little dip in the low mids because it tends to get pretty muddy. I've just got some compression going, mostly reacting to the snare. Uh, we've got some tape machines going to kind of bring out that analog sound and make it sound a little less digital. Some ozone imager for the stereo widening to make it sound a little bit more professional. And finally, for our limiter, we're using the Slate FGX. And for our reverb, we're using the Verb Suite Classics. Mostly, I'm going to have this sort of all verb channel going to make it sound like you're in a, an orchestral hall and everybody's kind of playing together. And I'm using a preset called Lush Orchestra. And I just tweak the decay a little bit to match our, our project tempo, which is 95. This is what we have so far. I'll get started and sort of massage this idea into something that's a lot cooler maybe. Let's go into our mixer over here. Let's clean up some of this extra low end from our bases. We have our kick over here and we have our bass over here. Now you see that the kick is mostly kind of happening in this area. Now we don't want that area to be very present in our bass as well. This is our snare. You can hear already that things are sort of separated, separated, they're kind of sitting in their own spaces, which I think is pretty cool. Cool. Let's see it work with the other instruments. So, in the strings, we've got, again, a lot of frequencies that are kind of clashing with our kick and snare, and we don't want that to happen. We're gonna use a multiband compressor to kind of tame a little bit those lower frequencies. And we're gonna make two bands, low end and a mid low. What happen, what's, what tends to happen with strings and with an, or with an orchestra, at least from what I can tell, is that usually at these low mid frequencies tend to build up and they're pretty boxy and they, they create a lot of mud in the mix. So we're going to clean them up now. Okay, it doesn't sound super epic, but we can hear all of the instruments clearly. We're gonna be writing in D. Yeah, that's what I like to see.
part because what's happening is the filter is making the kick sound really really dark and sort of far away but we want it to be present we want that thumping right to get that to get that vibe going in the in the song And that's what you want to hear. Serial pad, serial. I think that'll work. All righty then. And I'm going to turn the mix up a little bit. I'm going to go with a reverb and I'm going to go with splashy synth. I already like the sound of that. Is that not a beautiful sound? I gotta say. I'm gonna put in some effect. Anyway, yeah, 90s adventure games, they're cool. There's one thing I really do not like, the sound of, really, and that's hi-hats. I'm still really new to this streaming stuff. Like, the more I listen to this basic, like, sort of D note, the more I hate my chord progression for some reason. Um, I'm, I think I'm gonna move it out of the way, and I think we're gonna sort of change this song a little bit. I'm gonna move this, this around. I don't know, I don't know. I'm starting to not feel it. I'm gonna move these synths as well. And we're not gonna lose them. We're probably gonna bring them back a bit later, but... Yeah, and that sounds terrible. So, like, we can go... I, if that isn't a, a Super Nintendo boss theme, I don't know what it is. Actually, it, it reminds me of Final Fight. Mighty Final Fight. I don't know if anybody played that thing. Silly sound, but it is sort of retro-wavy, and we like that. I thought the Crazy Frog song would start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. So we're going to start up with the D. When, when writing songs, like I usually just fumble around with presets and change some parameters and stuff like that. And sometimes you, you end up somewhere cool. Sometimes you end up somewhere where it's not that cool, like this case. But mm, you still use it because you did it. And if you did it, put it in the song and just turn it down a notch. see how that sounds. Oh my lord, that was... that was loud. Let's see if that actually works. Let's uh, make the synth change with the chord progression. It's really basic stuff so far. Hmm. Yes, we don't want the high notes over here. We'll put them on the orchestra. Let's put in that delay.
all I'm doing right now is building up a chord in the whole string section. That's all I'm doing. It's nothing fancy, but it, hopefully it'll sound cool. These strings louder, bigger. We need them to just sound massive, don't we? And in order to do that, I'm gonna put in some sort of parallel aggressive compression. Have to be very, very careful with strings. We don't want them to be uh, distorted because that's gonna change the character too much. That's gonna sound terrible. <laughs> Do some tricks on the master bus to especially bring out the sort of wideness of the orchestra and also we're going to be adding the sort of uh, brass section. It's a good feeling to, to stream actually, it's a good weird. touched something I shouldn't have. You calling me old? Because you might be right. No, it's a floppy disk because it's synthwave in the 80s. Yes, at one point you could use cassettes to load programs into computers. Is that boomer enough for you? <laughs> So let's take a look at our master bus. I like to create separation between the mid and the side channels. Add in some virtual mix rack. Let's quickly do some brass. Fire, BBC, Symphonic Orchestra, and this shouldn't go into the synth. This should go into the brass. Let's bring the Brahms. Big Bang Orchestra. But here's the cool thing, when you go lower, and if you go even lower, Okay, so what I did over here is I just EQ'd and cleaned up a little bit of the frequencies. When you distort brass, you just make it so mean. Check this out. A goddamn crash over here when this song starts. Cheers, YouTube.
we want to do the ups. I think this is a 9 inch nails progression and I'm gonna use it like that. Oh well, we've been working the low end pretty pretty hard right here with like the basses and the brass, which is really cool. But we also need that plucky high end, that shimmery high end to get that cyberpunk synthwave feel. Hey, 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 it's the C, it's the D and it's the D sharp because effectively what we've done in this part, we've moved keys down a full, a full note. So we're going to basically from D minor to C minor, right? We've kind of abused the orchestra up, to, up until this point, quite heavily, I might add. Let's uh, see if we can do something cool with just synths, right? That sounds pretty cool. I'm gonna do some sound effects. Wait a minute. I've been working this entire time and I haven't switched to the Cubase cam, have I? I'm glad this will be on YouTube. Yeah, you see what, what I'm going for? Like this... Ah, it's it's so close. It's so close. Let, let's let's, let's uh, get it there then. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it's such a silly and dinky sound, but when you put it with all the, the other impacts, it sounds huge, right? And the reason for that is that all of these sort of bigger impacts have sort of atmosphere, right? And it's kind of tricking your brain that the anvil hit also has that atmosphere. I just needed to put it on the actual, wait. Just need to put it on the actual hit itself. A kick drum puncher, sure. Mm -mm. But before I go to the next section, I need to do one thing, guys, and that is mix the bloody drums. Right. Yeah, so be sure whenever you're sort of adding stuff that you're taking away the stuff that is really not needed. We're gonna create a separate reverb channel for the snare because it's synth wave and if you don't have like a huge snare reverb, why are you doing it? Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Okay, so let's take the long one then and let's see how that fares. Let's hit record. Maybe I should mute the intermission song. What do you guys think? <sighs> Let me color this in a way that I can see it. Let's figure out where we want to go next. Piano. The year is 2085. Welcome to the grid. 
Oh, it's an A sharp because we're in D minor. Right, right. So Dan does know his music theory. This does nothing. And don't forget to breathe in between your brass notes. It's very important because brass players have to catch their breath. Cool, cool, cool. Now then. G, C, right. Ugh, my, my brain melted for a second. Sorry. <laughs> There you go, there you go, there you go, and there you go. Let's write a lead. No, not group seven. What the heck is group seven? Nobody cares about group seven. So let's do this, let's do that, and let's do that. And let's turn you off and you off. Right, so I think I'm gonna go for a fully like orchestral bit here in the middle and then we can transition back to our synth wave and have like a purely synth wave bit again. It's just it's just using your imagination like it can be even stuff like starting from dreams or stuff like that. I, more often than not ideas for songs are things that start from things that I dream so I actually dream songs or stuff like that and then I wake up and I have an idea for a melody. Everything went wrong. Okay, so we have this bit here, and I'd really like to stop it, to change it to like a 2-4, and then back to a 4-4 four, four on the floor. Okay. Okay, and we're gonna be playing with the filters and the volume. Yeah, this note is sticking out like a sore thumb. I thought it would be a cool thing, but it is not, alas. This is what it's all about for me, adding so a lot of subtle elements that kind of contribute to a layered song that is kind of always interesting. Even if you listen to it for like the third or fourth time, you might discover something that you didn't hear the first time. Is it just me or that is definitely not loud enough? Gain! And having this sort of fading, pumping thing is an, is an EDM trick, right? Right, 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 right. Do I want to go back to like... I'm bumping up the tempo a little bit. I want to start out with this low D and paste and paste and paste and do it again. Am I on the right thing? No, I'm not. Hey. 
There you go. There you go. There's your kids' AD theme. I don't even know what pad I'm at. A splashy synth. Is this not totally Knight Rider? I need David Hasselhoff. There you go. There you go. It's fine. It's fine. We're professionals here. Let's double this up. Yeah. And then we can do a cool thing with auto pan to kind of give it like a trance gate or something. No. No. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna bring this up loud. Let's see what that feels like. Okay, let's see if we can get this brass to brom properly. There you go. It's subtle, but you can feel it coming. Like it's a big thing that's gonna happen, right? Anyway, so let's bring back the main theme from the beginning. No. Do it. The first time this theme comes in, it's a little bit more freeform. I think I've got like different lengths and there are different times where the instruments are coming in and stuff like that because it's an intro, right? This time I want it structured and clear and everybody's playing at the same time from the beginning. Bass trombones, that is what we're doing. Bass trombones. Fine with that. Let's do some Phil Collins toms. And there's one thing I really hate doing when it comes to music, and that is mixing toms. Oh, it's six channels. I've got six toms. Hold, hold the phone. And now we're going to do sound check mixing. We need to finish writing this. Sort of, uh, I keep, <laughs> I keep having to stop myself from saying bad words. Uh, I was gonna s keep writing this sucker. Repeat this bit and damn I'm I'm just jamming like super hard on this song now. 
I don't even know what notes I'm playing on the pads, so this is gonna be an interesting experience for the both of us. Oh boy! What notes am I playing over here? Dude, I like that. It's different. It's different. It's not like super correct. I think there are some notes clashing there, but I really could not care. It works. Which is super cool, but I don't want to do it with this instrument. I mean, I, I, I want to do it with this instrument, but I want to do it with another instrument. Fading, like pumping things a bit more to make more space for the drums. Uh, things that... And there's my desktop. Are we still live? Yes, we are. There's my desktop. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. Cheers. Like how? We're gonna go back to the D. Like I've changed the volume five times already on these toms and every time I hear them, they're just, the, I need them quieter, I need them louder, I need them to just go away. <laughs> Bring back the orchestra. Go all wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Let's uh, go back to the main uh, scene. Oh, that's too low. Do I have a low C? Yes. You know, words, but you know what I mean. It's like... It's like I can hear it. And when you write a bit of music you think basically about the about separating that section into two different parts so instead of writing one part for trumpets you're writing two parts in a certain section of music and does this like work <laughs> okay this is gonna be silly let's do it and i think it sounds cool you guys can let me know if i'm out of my bloody mind but the third the fifth and the octave ah, that works <laughs> my th that copy paste action was just too much So I'm gonna try to record for the first time ever a three octave run with both hands. Well, run, I say run. It's just uh, four chords, but the idea is that 
I would need, I'm going to need coordination in my arm, in my hands, in my tiny hands. Uh, let's see if I can do it. I did a passable job the first time. I'm just going to copy paste it. And we're going to have to find a cool lead or other element to kind of supplant um excuse me mm. like mm -hmm. yeah like that man that sounds super cool like it i like it so much I can't even. Ooh, I like this sound though. Actually, it's super, it's super old school. Uh, if only, if only. We're gonna make it wider with Wider from Infected Mushroom, which is a super cool plugin. It's a free plugin, makes everything wide. Now I think we just need to go back to Synthwave and fade out. I think that's the song, guys. I think. I'm not sure. Let's find out. Let's get back to our basic D and let's do just some sort of minimalist ambiental lead type stuff. I'm just messing around with some random notes to give it a, a bit more. Okay, and now basically what we want to do is we just want to vibe on this beat um, and sort of fade out. Yeah, how, how are we feeling about this one? Are we jamming to this? Because I'm jamming to this. Here we go. I think I just made Blade Runner. I think that's the song, guys. Anyway, again, thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are. I hope you are having an excellent, an excellent day. I hope you are staying safe and I hope you are loved and happy. Thank you.